Hi, it's Mickey Dolenz here. You're listening to Inspirato Projecto. It's a lot easier to talk about stuff about it. Uh, oh, good, good, yeah, good. Yeah, that is, I've, I've made a lot of, I've made a lot of, I've done tests. I have a government phone right here. And so it's like, I'm always talking about this stuff. Man of Blacker knocking at my door. Yeah. <laughs> and at the same time, I'm not getting weird calls from strange people. Oh, that's good. Uh, that, that was actually something that I experienced, I think, uh, 2009 or so, oh. after attending a, uh, actually, a, we're, in, we're in Burbank right now. We're, oh, no, we're in Glendale right now. Um, this is where I was born. This, this is the city I was born in. Um, were you attending a CE5 event? No, it, I was going, it's kind of funny that you say CE5. It, Greer wasn't there. It was actually for, oh, for a... Um, Going all over the place. Let me uh, let me come up with. Well, that. first, let me tell your dream. Yeah. As a, as a, because that sounds really fascinating. Well, it's interesting too that we're talking about Burbank. We're, well, we just left Burbank, and I'm, I'm referencing to Awaken Aware. So there's a conference called Awaken Aware in oh. uh, 2009. It was hosted by Project Camelot. Oh. Later on, two years later, they would they would they would host another um, host another Awaken Aware conference. Uh, this time it was in a different location, Burbank. Um, you know, it was kind of like a follow-up to this very first successful um, sort of presentation. It was pretty cool. But um, anyway, so long story short, um, what's interesting was at the second, uh, the very first one, I wanted to talk to Bob Dean. Who? Bob Dean. Bob Dean was a uh, was an intelligence expert who worked with NATO. Um, uh, in the 1960s, in the late 60s and 70s, mm. and he he had cosmic top secret clearance. He had like the highest clearance, and he used to work basically in an intelligence group where he they where they would basically monitor activity coming out of Russia. And there was this vault that he was right next to that he got to get access to wow. and read stuff. And so one day he's he's basically his story is basically like he's. He's sitting at the he's sitting at the monitor. He's falling asleep. Um, he's you know the, the the coffee that he's drinking is just like fucking mud, and it's not keeping him awake. And what happens is his his, uh, his commanding supervisor comes up to him and says, "Oh, you can't stay awake, huh?" So he goes into the vault, comes back out, throws a stack of papers right in front of him. He says, "Read that. That'll keep you up." Oh my gosh. He reads and it, it's this basically this 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 study on strange phenomena and weird contact and the sort of studies uh, from like various different groups about this sort of case of strange phenomena and it was it was this it was nuts he read it over and over again he got to like understand the sort of weird complexities of of, of strange sort of eerie phenomenon with the phenomenon and what's interesting too is that he would never really talk to anybody outside of an experiencer about these things like oh. Project Camelot would constantly try to drill him and get information from him and it was kind of funny because esoterically when you watch his interviews it's almost as though he's just kind of dropping keys not oh. for you not for you not for not, you know not for you as in Project Camelot or the listener or whatnot, but for you the experiencer Mm -hmm. For you, the individual who has actually been sort of initiated in, into this strange kind of, you know, weird world of, of contact. Um, and it's not a blessing either. It's, 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 uh, it's, uh, it's challenging. Anyway, so um, I'm in third grade and I have this really bizarre dream dream that's like you know stranger than strange um, uh, real quick did, did, did Bob uh, t uh, d does your dream does your dream remind you of things that he had said that like match up that where maybe it made sense what was the name the, the, yeah, the Bob did, yeah. guy yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, it's interesting because later on he would actually ver verbally verify some of these things that oh my gosh oh my gosh and he would say literally I, I walked up to him at one point trying to talk to him about it and he just didn't have any time and just kind of blew past me I'm like ah and I, I really wanted this 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 opportunity to talk to him and so I tried it again when a bunch of people were sitting around him like theorizing and just kind of like you know it was just 
a bunch of tramps kind of hanging around, uh, uh-huh. I, I, as I call it, like just UFO tramps. Yeah, yeah. Individuals who are just like, you know who I really don't like? The Freemasons. Oh, they're right. Like, they're real deep into it. And, 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 and it's funny, it's just like, you, you say, well, which group of Freemasons do you not like? All of them. They're all bad. And it's like, well, well yeah, it's, it's, you can tell the level of, of, of information that this individual Right, has. right, Just, right. Their research takes them up to a certain point. They didn't go through other certain doors. If they would have actually have done the work, and mm-hmm. they would, and you know, not relying upon, you know, eighth-hand information... They would they would discover that there's not just one group of Freemasons. There's mm. there's the seventeen seventeen Freemasons. There's the co-ed Freemasons. In fact, when you, when I think about Freemasonry, I, I think about Benjamin Franklin, like this guy, or and George Washington. They were literally a part of two different houses of Freemasonry. One was very one was very like esoteric. They they practiced the esoteric, but they were they were very much on track with the. the the, the philosophy and idea of of, 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 of building communities and, uh-huh. and freedom, you know, right. the, the free man, <laughs> right? Not, not the not the slave man. And Which is interesting because a mason is someone who builds, and to be a free mason, a person who's building freedom, builds freedom, is a pretty neat idea. It's an interesting sort of concept. It's really that simple, and honestly, oftentimes the truth is very simple. It's not complex. The the, the 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 interweaving of trying to get there to the truth is oftentimes uh, complex. Mm. But once you get to the very end and you reveal the curtain, you know, in the back, it's it's, it's simple. It's not it's not that <laughs> right. like well, how complex is this thing? And right. Then, like, if you're, it depends on how you're looking at it from. If you're a, a, a flashback human and you're trying to understand a multi-dimensional uh, being directly in front of you, you're not going to be able to understand it. But if, you know, that multidimensional being looks like some sort of staticky thing, you know, anyway. But if you've seen this thing over and over and over, because your culture has been talking about it for the last hundred years, oh, look, it's those greys, they're in charge of everything. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's go back to the dream. So, yeah, the dream. So, um, so these are the sorts of individuals that are hanging around Bob Dean. You know, the, the individuals who are just like... The, uh, conspiracy speculators, uh, mm. speculators, you know, guys that are actually speculating all over the place and what's not, you know, and not even really earning any of this knowledge. Right. You know, they're not, not following the paper trails. They're not following the hints, the clues, the, yeah. you know, they're just kind of taking something yeah. for They're not doing is. the homework. You know, right. they're just, they're, they're, they're just, they're letting someone else read the cliff notes to mm. them. Mm. And the person isn't even reading the cliff notes. They read it like a year ago and they're just trying to. Oh, this is what I remember. Right, <laughs> right. So, so, Dean, you know, it's just, you can just tell that he's just like, he's drinking, he's drinking like some, a bourbon on rocks, a, a bourbon on the rocks, and he's just kind of like, he's in his 80s at this point, and he's just like, oh, just waiting for someone to say something interesting. And I say, Dean, I want to tell you about a dream I had. So I told him, and this was a dream, and uh, I was like, uh, I told him, when I was uh, around 10, around 10, um, I had this really interesting dream that I was walking out of my my house um, at night because I just it was just something I did, apparently. And I was about to get... I was entering into, like, some sort of a large vehicle. At first, I thought it was like a... Uh, at first, I thought it was like a van. It was much larger, um, taller. But it was sort of like a van if you just took off, if you just kind of had, like, you know, no doors. Oh. And you just made a little bit more of a rectangle. And then you had, like, sort of, you didn't have you didn't have any corners to it. It was just kind of, like, rounded sides. And it was just, just it wasn't really that impressive what it looked like. Later, when I saw, like, a Tic Tac, the Tic Tac UFO thing, yeah. I saw drawings of what they hypothesized that would be. By the way, the drawings of what I hypothesized would be, I don't don't quite believe that. But I have to wonder, like, if what I saw was sort of, you know, or what I saw when I was a kid was... But like a close-up that. version yeah. of it? It was interesting because, like, it reflected... It reflected the, uh, the, the... It looked... It was as dark as night. You know, it was just like you... I remember the surface of it, too. It was... I can't even remember if it was metal, but reflected the night. Oh, wow. And um, so 
I walk to the back of it, and it opens up sort of like my trunk uh, to, this, to, this, to this car. And I step in, and there it looks like there's these three pilots at the very end. They're not even looking at us. And I don't even know if they're human. So in fact, I, I think they were human. But they're not even looking at us. And it's just sort of like we instantly know just to walk in, grab a seat, and you know, and then we and then we head off. And what was interesting about it was the seats were. I remember the seats were interesting because like there were other kids in there, and it wasn't just kids. It was almost like a couple of adults too. Um, there were kids in there around my age. There was adults in there. Around, there was a couple of adults um, around my age too, and. We didn't really even look at each other or even interact with each other. We did, some of them were just kind of like, you know, sitting there and they're just waiting to get, go somewhere. So we just sit in there and I'm... And How I'm many like, would you say you're in there? I mean, if you're just in like a about Probably, maybe, I would, my brain says eight. Oh, okay. Like eight of us, basically. It could have been more. I'm not sure. Um, so okay. in other words, this craft, was it a lar- like a large craft or was it only big enough to hold like could, that amount of people? It could have even been as big as you know, that's the back cab of that. Oh, really? Yeah. You, I mean, not of the not semi-trailer. As, not as long, but I was as tall, prob- probably. Right. I mean, maybe. I, remember, I was a kid, so right, right. That looks Everything crazy. looks bigger, right? When the you're thing, a kid, too. It's like there were these beams that could have been tall, and they were sitting in, a, in such a way too. There were there were this, there were two. I remember this. There was there was two beams that were at the bottom. And then there was one guy that was at the top, and it was like they were all pilots, but it was like sort of like this guy was a little bit further in the front, and he was like up here. It was it was interesting. The three pilots, all in separate seats, one oh. here, one here, and one up here, oh. a little bit back. And you know, if I was asked to describe it, I would say that it looked sort of it was at the time it was sort of futuristic. Um, I can't go into great detail because I think I was more interested in where we were going. Right, right. So I was like, the only the only way that they could see was something directly in front of them. It was just like there was like you walked into this thing and it had no windows, but then you get inside and it was almost like there was a window that they were navigating through. Oh, but it was interesting because like what I saw was just like sort of like a it wasn't like a huge like sort of you know enterprise screen to where you see the uh, the uh, space. It was you know. There, was, there, were, there were disruptions in, in the way of it. It's possible that the pilots may have been able to see more than me, but um, the two guys at the bottom, they didn't see through the hatch. It was only the guy at the top, basically. And like I said, it was sort of like oh. a, you know, like, like this. But anyway, so I got to see us. Like a second floor? Yeah, 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 sorts? It was, it, yeah, it was weird. So I got to see us leave the planet. Oh. And then stars. Oh, wow. And then it was crazy because, like, like, I just remember, and it didn't take that long. It's like, you know, like how long it takes for a Tesla car to go. Right. That's how long it took to get out of the planet. It was incredible. It was interesting. And there was like just a little bit of, there was just like a little bit of, 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 of path to it. Like you could just, you know, you could kind of, you could feel that everything was changing, but it wasn't too bad. It was just like getting in an elevator, but it wasn't even... The elevator would. You, I would say the elevator feels a lot more. You can feel a lot more gravitational pull in the elevator. Right, like you didn't feel that acceleration. That kind of. Whoosh. Yeah, you it was. Feel a, much it of the was. It was. A, you, you did. You, but it wasn't much. Mm-hmm. I could have been standing up. And, I, I, so that that was the. I just. Wow. I remember the sensations. I remember like the feeling of of wonderness as as I was going out. And then. I don't know how much time passed, but then like I could see what I thought the time were the rings of Saturn approaching. Mm. And and Saturn in the background, and some sort of like um, what appeared to be like s- space station or something. Ooh. It was kind of hard to see it because I was I remember it's the space station, but I was more enraptured by Saturn because and, and and the sort of colors that were coming off of the uh, the uh, the rings of Saturn. Oh wow. So many colors. And so did do so. At that point, did you were you seeing things out that front window, or were there side windows that you were able to kind of see? We were the, we were entering the atmosphere, of like some sort of space, like like some sort of station or something like that. Like it was interesting, like the station that we were that we landed at, it was almost like landing at like some sort of a sci-fi kind of like you know, depot, like 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 a, like 
a you were like a like a like a bus depot. It was weird. Wow. And that's what it kind of felt like. So, wow. And it was like this massive sort of platform. Um, so, you know, it's like, so we fly in, we, I guess we, whatever it was, hover, fly, I don't know, drop in, and then the back opens up again, we all get out, and it's kind of funny because we automatically just get into single file lines. Um, that's the thing I remember. It's like, all the, like all the kids are getting into a single file line, and somebody adults are getting into a single file line, and we're all going into some sort of hall. And I remember, like, as I'm walking by, I recognize some of these beings. And they don't look human. It's not a lot of them. They don't even look human. Um, I'll, I'll, just, I'll tell you what they look like off the, out, outside of the recording. Because if anyone else had this experience, I want to cooperate what it is. Uh, you know, I want to not cooperate, but I want to cooperate. It's such a horrible thing. I would like to, if someone else had an experience like this, yeah. I'd like to talk to them. But yeah. I don't, but I, I know for myself certain key aspects that I want to leave out because I want to have these conversations with them. But because I want to, I really want, because this is, this is a true story and it's genuine, uh, off the, off the record, I'll, I'll tell you, um, off gotcha. this recording. Well, any information you're sharing here today is going to inspire those, you know, because there are a lot of people who are afraid to tell these stories. Absolutely, and yeah. They think they're going to get judged. They think they're going to be crazy. And I think at least with the most recent um, um, news of the Pentagon saying, yes, we have been, you know, studying all this. And yes, that we've been in contact with the Galactic Federation. I think that might give some solace to a lot of people in knowing that, oh, okay, the story is breaking. And now my story is not going to sound so crazy. Yeah. And um, so a lot of times, the, you know, by, by one person sharing their story, it, it clicks with another person's brain and then they want to share their story, you know, so I, I might end up getting a lot uh, more interviews, yeah, you know, on totally. the podcast because of, totally, because yeah. of this. So and I'm, I'm happy to serve. Sharing yeah, you're... I'm happy to serve too. And, and for me too, it's, it's also, I think it's important to kind of just talk about the meat and leave some of that esoteric stuff out, um, mainly for the reason that those individuals who need to come forth, mm. they'll know, you know, they'll know where to fill the blank basically. Um, and it'll also inspire them because, you know, but one of these, yeah, you know, anyway, so I'll, I'll, I'll keep going forward. So, so you guys went to so sort of a bus depot of sorts. So yeah, it was like, so, yeah, single, yeah, single file line. It was interesting too. And I get into a single file line and, and so behind me is, is the depot to the right of me are the rings of Saturn. Like you can see it basically. And, and, and what's also really interesting is that there's no windows. It's right there. Space is right there. That was the really interesting thing about this experience is that it, it, it was like you, we were in some sort of atmosphere, but like space was right up there. It was, just, wow. it was the weirdest thing. Wow. So, and you got to see the rings of Saturn. Like I said, they, they have all these different colors to them. You, did you, you know, feel you were on Saturn, a Saturn type of planet? No, it or almost, did you pass by that it on, its way, on your way to the bus depot? It almost seemed as though we were on a space station that was on the rings of ooh, Saturn. Ooh. That were floating just above the rings oh, of Saturn. Wow. Yeah, I wow. know. I know. Um, yeah, I know. So, to the right of us looks like some sort of habitat. Um, or like, like, it was interesting. It was like, it, it was like this created environment mm. and there was like I mean sorry to the left to the right of me was the, I'm dyslexic I'm sorry to the to the left of to the right of me was this open space and then to the right of me was sorry to the left of me left <laughs> left or right to the left of me was like I don't know could have been like what they lit in could have been something but it was just like this entire it was it was it was it was it was huge it was like looking at a valley basically Whoa. And it was just like a lot of open space, but there was like you can tell that there was stuff all over there, buildings, open space, like fun, 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 uh, stuff, um, trees. <laughs> wow. Um, but again, I wasn't really so much interested in that as I was interested in what you know what was going on the right of me. The space was right over there. Oh, that's the living spaces on the left of me. Yeah, let's go look at the right. And as we're walking down this particular path, uh, we enter this, like, sort of, I guess, this convention hall. It was interesting because the convention hall wasn't constructed like a normal sort of convention. Um, it's hard to explain how it was constructed. Like, my memory has, like, I don't know, it's like... Yeah, it's, 
it's it's hard to say. It's hard to Did say. Did they lead you into some place? It's almost like a space mountain sort of con- oh. construct. That that's the that's more of a but not so like nineteen you know fifties or sixties uh, era sort of sculpture. More of like a practical. A lot of like I said, it was all simple. A lot of it was more practical. When you got inside, though, it wasn't too simple. Though it was amazing because it like it was almost as though you could fit a countless number number of people in this sort of convention hall. It was almost like a a, wow. sta- a, a stadium or oh. a, or a or a or a, a class, but like everyone sat in these seats, and it was strange because it's like you sat in these seats, and then, then there was another person that was directly in front of you, but that person never really abrupted your your ability to see what was going on. Then this man came up on stage, human-looking man, um, had, had long hair, had a beard, he was wearing a robe, and uh, he was talking about these things that were occurring and that would occur in the future. And it was strange because one of the things that we saw was uh, 9-11, um, a number of things that would occur. Whoa. Um, even the virus to certain aspects. Um Except though, my my I wasn't really so much interested in the politics of things as I was more interested in sort of human consciousness, science, light, and then other things. I was there to sort of under, try to understand what happened to me when I was a little kid. For me, for me, and I remember how consciously, you know, I, I just lucidly thinking, that's nice. This is all great. This this okay. The science is cool. And I didn't really even understand it at the time, but this, you know, it's just being indoctrinated. Um, understanding it was interesting because they, they they're telling you they were telling you like about future history past history as though the as though the future hadn't even had already been written it was strange mm. um, more aspects of it had already been written and then another sort of aspect to where like we were it's hard to say you know, like, I only have, like, as I'm... So the speaker, did, did you say there... So on the screen, you were seeing these sort of, like, flashes of, of the future? It was almost as though, like, the screens were just sort of floating holograms. Oh, okay. You know, like, directly in front that everyone saw. And almost as though, like, everyone could, you know, it didn't matter where you sat, because everyone could basically see this. Oh, how many people would you say were in there? <laughs> I, I mean, I, was it like a state? Like, was was that all that space filled up with people? In other words, when I was when I was much when I was younger, I used to say that there was a million people there, but I don't know. Maybe millions of people went there. Who knows? But it was it was I I couldn't count. Like I, I couldn't count. It was it was it was wow. so many. And I was more interested in what was going on directly in front of me, uh, especially what this person was saying. Now. All these memories I'm telling you are are the memories that I've been able to hold on to, mm. um, and it was interesting. Like I said in the very beginning, like some of the I think I said this in the very beginning, the entities that I saw, not all, of, and, and and I saw some humanoid, human-looking entities, but I also saw entities that looked somewhat like machines too. Whoa. And they, they, it was interesting because it didn't matter if they were like insectoids or machines or, or your typical sort of like gray, except these guys were way taller, way taller. Wow. Yeah. Tall. Um, oh, they're little three feet gray. That's not the grays. That's not the ones I've seen. I've, I've seen smaller entities before like grays, but at that time it wasn't the little guys I, I was worried about. It was the big guys. Um, those are the ones I still have nightmares about sometimes. Too. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I have nightmares about. <laughs> I'm not racist, but I have nightmares about big brown, <laughs> like um, uh, grays uh, coming How into my. How tall are they? Uh, taller than my door jam. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. They have to duck to get into. Uh, wow. They have to bend. They have to bend their heads down. And they do they have the oval eye? Do they have the, the that typical face that you'd see on? With uh, with grays, the, the yeah. little nose, little mouth, yeah. big eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the eyes, um, I think, like their eyes are sort of like that. But then there, there's like a secondary lens, sort of like like how we have sunglasses on. Yeah, yeah. Imagine they don't need sunglasses; they just put something over their eyes. Mm. Boop, boop, you know, and that's it. And so that's what they wear. Um, when I've seen them, and uh, do, 
did they hurt you in these dreams? I can't remember. I, I'm very, a part of me is... So it is possible that, you know, those are in fact meetings. They're coming to get you and bringing you aboard for other, for other meetings or other stealing, education. Stealing me away or basically like interested in, in knowing, you know, what's going on with this kid, you know, or something like that. Or even... It's possible you have an implant on you somewhere that you don't realize. Oh, I know, I do. I know where it is. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I know where it is. Oh my gosh. So, you know, I, 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 I could tell you. I think I just pointed at it. Were you <laughs> able to find it at a doctor's office or anything, or do you ever feel it there? I mean, can you actually feel it underneath That's the skin? That's a really good question. Um, yes, I can feel it, feel it under the skin. Um, did I have a doc? Did I get it? Have it? What I, did I? Did I have it looked at a doctor's office? No, but I had, did have a doctor look at it, but not at a doctor's oh, office. Oh wow! Yeah. Um, but. Uh, that's a really good question. That's it. That's like they. And that's they, a really good question to ask too. I, I, you know, I should go back and get it looked at, especially if I can find a doctor that I can trust won't make me feel weird about it. Well, this so. is probably. I mean, that's if I tell you, if you, if if you were to have that removed, first of all, I would. I, if I were you, I would not uh, uh, trust anyone to take it away to look at it in the lab because you'll never see it back again. I Easy. would take it home with you, yeah. and on top of that, those dreams would most likely stop, because I have a friend who something similar happened to him. I don't think I would remove it, and it's based upon another experience I had, too, much later on, when I was in my uh, late 20s, early 30s, I'll tell you about that. So, um, so later, uh, after the presentation's over, yeah. uh, we're basically led to different places to where it's almost as though we are, it's almost like they, like, we're going on, like, some sort of exercise mm. you know, after the presentation after like sort of class you know school of the future <laughs> it was pretty That's good. great it was really cool like like I I the, I can only remember like cliff notes in my head about the, some of the things we were talking about like I said 9-11 was talked about but it, they didn't recall it they didn't call it 9-11 like, I can't remember what they called it but did you just see imagery of it up on the screen I remember I remember something flying into the Pentagon and that's what I remember. It was like, this will happen to this, the Pentagon. You know, and when that happens, when that happens, it's like that that instant incident would signify all these other things that were going to occur. Mm. You know, and if this happens, basically, if, if this happens, all these other things are going to happen, and then you're, you know, and and I don't know what else was talking about. It was like something. It's good. Something's good supposed to happen, and but at the same time, there's there's a lot of hardships. That was the that was the problem. Like, get ready, it's going to be rough. That sort of thing. I'm kind of wondering if maybe you got a, a glimpse into what has been called the Looking Glass. Uh, when I met uh, uh, Doctor Spike, by the way, this uh, is really cool. Thank you. When yeah. I met Doctor Roger Lear at a secret UFO meeting, um, you know, he's gone now, but. He told us about yeah. the project. He told us about the Looking Glass and how um, that's how a lot of these. Uh, I don't know how many of these are around. You allegedly, know, the yeah. Earth. Yeah, allegedly. Uh, but they're able to look into it and kind of predict things. The thing about it is, like, I, I know about the Looking Glass phenomenon, and it's not always necessarily accurate. Um, it tells, it shows you not really what's going to be, but the possibilities of what it could be. Right, right. And it's interesting because, like, this sort of meeting that we were having. It wasn't the possibilities of what would be. It was the possibilities of what is. You know? Ah. Uh, it's interesting. Like, Bob Dean passed away about a few years ago. Oh. And I will, to the rest of my life, I will, I will, I will, I will always regret not talking to him about these things after we meet Matt. Because honestly, I didn't know what to do with it. Like, I didn't want to be just some sort of, I didn't want to be like those, you know, ufological tramps that were just hanging around him, basically. You know, asking him questions constantly. Because I knew I can be annoying. And I knew that I, 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 I'm aloof sometimes. I'm a fool. And I don't want to put someone through that. And I overthought it. I really should have been that fool. I really should have taken that risk and taken the action and, and, and built a friendship with well, him. Well, what did he, how did he respond to that when you told him, when you told him about this dream? Actually, first of all, what, it, was there more to the dream? Uh, there was. So what, there was like sort of exercises and... What kind uh, of exercises were you doing? I don't, I can't really say. 
like exercises in terms of like 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 uh, uh, like exams type of exercises or exercises like jumpy jack type of exercises. Do this. Like physical type stuff. Do this. Do this. Oh, do certain that. hand movements. Do this. Do this. Ooh. Certain hand movements, but basically Ooh. what those hand movements kind of lead towards. Right. Um, you know, like um, how you can you access certain aspects of your body. Oh, you wow. Know, like, and it's kind of funny because a lot of the things that they. Some of the things I showed us and everything, years later, a book would be released called The Psychic Witch. And a lot of, so like these natural abilities that we all have and that we can cultivate. And they're inside this book called The, uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 the uh, Psychic Witch. But then there's this other exercise I'll talk about. Um, I didn't want to talk about it at first, but I'll talk about it now. And, and so this is, this is the weird one. And I, I don't know how to explain this. Mm -hmm. I've never talked about this and it makes me uncomfortable. But I love you. Well, so by I'm you, say, talk about by you saying this, it might unlock a whole bunch of other memories for you. I you remember know? basically being given some sort of like utility belt. And oh, there wow. was like some sort of device that was like a like a, like a gun. Mm. Like a phaser gun. And basically we were being shown how to use weaponry. Mm. And at one point, we're just being shown how to have it on us, how to have a certain level of respect for it, how to have skill with it, stuff like that. And also at the same time, how to move through society without being reckless. You oh, know? wow. So he's just like, it's, it's like the simulated sort of place. And it was strange because it looked like pieces of area that was just really basic. It was like, you know, all these houses all around us. There's a skyscraper over there in the middle of the house. It was just kind of weird. It was like... Like a bunch of just random different things placed in there that... But it wasn't... Were, it wasn't... It was, you know, it was nothing like how we would see it here. Because it was almost as though they didn't understand zoning laws. Yeah, yeah. right. So there's like this, this this track house, you know, like like over here. Like this, this urban house. It's like right next to this like freaking... You know, skyscraper. And right, they, right. And trees all over the place, and I'm like, what? what, what you know, who's, who's design nightmare is this? I, that's how I, I look at it now, as a as a creative. And, oh, dude, well, look at that. Uh, oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's a nature bridge. It's like oh, one of the only dude. nature bridges. Yeah. Which is funny. Here we're talking about this type of thing, and who would have ever expected to see a nature bridge? Yeah. I've never seen something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's along the two, one. Uh, that's along the two ten. What I love the those. heck? That's amazing. Yeah. It's one of the few ones out in California. Nature Bridge, yeah. dude. I that sounds like an invention, not need, an actual real thing. Yeah, we need more of those. We need. Yeah. yeah. We need. We need to find. And this was a. This is a message I didn't receive from that meeting. This is a message I later on received when I started tapping into the same sort of energy and the same sort of entities that that the shamans, or I shouldn't say, I shouldn't call them shamans, the medicine men, uh -huh. the holy people. Right. The you know I don't want to call. I'm going to call them the holy people. Okay. You know, because that's in my in my that's my real my religion is my religion my personal religion the religion you know there's only one member of my religion it's me I <laughs> so, like it but I, I invite everyone else to be like that you know have your own religion but I I ask I beg you please <laughs> I beg you follow the yeah. higher moral path yeah follow the higher moral path says, I beg you we need it Our, your future incarnation needs it I need it now. That your host needs it, please. You know, if you if you're following this, if you're following this work, if you if you are a, a way worker yourself, yeah. follow the higher path, please. Yes. I beg you. We all beg you. Your ancestors beg you. Yes. Um, oh my gosh. Your future selves beg you. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so uh, so do, I. Do you want to talk about with the? Because you were saying yeah, that the, you were at, you were there. Was it a hologram type of thing where they were teaching know. you how to shoot the laser guns? Or? Yeah, well, it was something. It was almost like they were just there. It was almost like the laser guns were not to to uh, teach us. It, we, it's almost like it's like they taught us to use them a little bit, but then they taught us just to not use them. Right. And it was an interesting sort of philosophy of teaching us not to use the weapon. So. Now, real quick, did it look like a Star Wars kind of uh, 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 honestly, it looked like gun? A, honestly, it looked like the gun from slightly looked like the gun from Laser Tag. Oh, oh, that's oh, cool, cool. Just that was an bit, idea I had in my yeah, yeah, just a little smaller, a lot smaller, right? More, uh, a lot, 
not bulky at all. Like those laser tap guns were amazing. Oh amazing. yeah. But I remember too that I had like a strong desire for a laser, like one of those laser tag guns. Yeah, oh yeah, me too. And it was kind of cool because like months later I would actually, as a gift, I would receive the laser tag gun. Oh my gosh, it, so it cool. must have been so was, exciting. I loved it. I loved that game. I still love that game. It's so good. Um, so I got really good at that as at a young, at, at, at when I was a young kid. Um, so uh, so they're teaching it to like what the, the how it works, but then like how not to use it, so to speak. Like, yeah, they're, they're, they're basically teaching, like, not to use the gun. Or they teach how to use the gun, and then they're teaching you not to use the gun. Right, it's kind of like martial arts. It's like you got this ninja who can, you know, kill you in 400 different ways, but but you, you only use that in the most extreme situations, Yeah, and, it, and it's interesting, too, because they're almost, you know, this sort of, like, you know, I can't even remember who the guides were. I just remember they were tall. Mm. Yeah, I remember they were tall and they were sort of friendly. Were they looking. humanoids? They were. They were definitely not human. But oh, they were, but they were noids. Uh, they were and they and they were quad. They were you know they were quadrupeds like like us. Oh. Or bi bipedal, bipedal quadrupeds. Yeah, bipedal quadrupeds. Like That's us. a good name for a band. Uh, bipedal <laughs> quadrupeds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we are bipedal quadrupeds. <laughs> <laughs> um. So how long did that exercise go on for? Uh, <coughs> I know it's hard to tell time with something like that, but did you feel, feel like you learned a whole bunch of different stuff? I did, but I feel like I failed at some point in the test. Um, and uh, I was amongst some of the individuals who were basically uh, taken out early or removed early. Because mm. apparently I had to go back to my, uh, to my craft to leave. And but everyone was really cool. Now, was it, with the other people with you, were it all was it all ages for these exercises, or did they b b split you off into the groups? Like, it's, okay, this is your age. Group everyone or? was around the same age. Oh, everyone gotcha. Everyone was like, everyone was around the same height, so they were all like adolescents. Basically. Oh, wow. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I shouldn't say around the same height, but like around the same you know, age group, basically. You right, know, right. You know, like how you can tell a bunch of six-year-olds or mm -hmm. first graders, third graders, kind of like that. You know, so. Um, so yeah, we were really, uh, the indoctrination aspect of this is really interesting too, because it very much felt friendly. Mm. Yeah, there was nothing hostile. There it was, sounds like it. There was nothing scary about the entire experience. And in fact, too, like I remember when I was a kid wanting to experience it again. I think I may have, but I think I may uh, have. Like, I bet you you have. Yeah, but I think I may have like on a, on a, on a different sort of level, and I think now let's say if you had experienced that. Oh well, first of all, so they took you. So they took you back to the to your to your to your space bus. Yeah, different people are inside of it this time. Mm -hmm. uh, same pilots though. Oh. So, but similar or similar pilots, and then just as quickly we like we left uh, that spot, um, and I saw this beautiful sort of like crescent-shaped object approaching us, and it was it was. It was Earth. Oh my gosh. And it was crescent shape. I remember that. It was crescent shape. I was like, oh, why is it crescent shape? And then we're going right directly into the black spot. And I remember as we were going in, like, there was light everywhere. It was like, oh, the blue. And then we go into black, 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 and it's night. And uh, I get out and I go inside. And I think, like, one of those tall beams, like, like came with came with me inside or something like that. Locked like a company, like accompanied you to the door. Yeah, it was very friendly. Very, again, very friendly. Could have been my mom, you know. It was just like, but it wasn't. It was, or it could have been a friend of my mom's, you know. That's kind of what it felt, you know. It was kind of like that. It's a very nice person, you know. Very interested in my safe return, and you know, led me led me to my be my bedroom, the door held it open, closed it, and then I went to sleep. Yeah. Now, do you remember seeing the, the space bus fly back off into the sky? No. Like, see you guys later? No, oh, I, gotcha. just, I just went directly into the house. Um, that that would have been great. Incredible. I would have loved to have seen it to, to leave. That, that's a really good question. You know what? It, what's popping in my brain right now, by you telling this story, I think what's going to be great is this is going to unlock lots of memories with people. And, um, and what, what, oh, what I would oh, love check is... Check this out. Check this out. There's one part of this room. Oh, dream. yes, yes. Here's the crescendo of this hall. Oh, yes. So it's it's decades later, and I'm at the second Awake and Aware conference. This oh. time, getting to talk to Bob Dean. Oh. And I tried talking to him the first day and couldn't talk to him. Then I had I saw an opportunity, and I talked to him 
you know, with his with his sort of like wayward fanfare that was around. <laughs> yes, yes. And uh, he just stopped, looked directly in the eye, and said, "That was no dream." Oh! And he, and I, I love said, it. And I said, and I told him, I said, Bob, you were the one in the hall teaching us all. Whoa! And he's like. Yeah, I, I know. I have oh. memories of oh. I have memories of this. And I have memories Dude. and people I have other memories. I also have other I have other accounts of people being being taken and on some sort of craft oh. and they see me walking oh. around in a row. Oh my I gosh. I don't know what's going on, but I, I know I know it's no dream. Oh my gosh. So we talked. We talked for five hours the next day. Um, he came out, he 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 just got done on stage. He was, he, was, he was, I guess he was just done for the day talking, you know, on stage. And he comes up to me and he says, I really enjoyed, our, I really enjoyed our talk last night. I'd like to continue it. Oh. And I said, yeah. So we sat at a table for hours. Oh hours. Oh my gosh. Um, his wife, his wife or girlfriend came out at one point. I got to meet her. My companion that was with me the entire time sat with us, um, who was with us. And we just talked. And then, like, he it was kind of funny. He's like, "Yeah, hey, I lost my dream ticket. Anyone want to buy me a bourbon? Would someone go out and buy him a bourbon? It's his favorite drink. Bur- bourbon, bourbon on the rocks. Bourbon on the rocks. Wow. Or, or was, or was it on the rocks? Or was the street? It was on the rocks. Were you guys able to uh, dive deeper into your dream and the and, and, and the similarities that he, you know, the pieces of stuff that he remembered? Yeah, we speculated on the etherealness on the sort of etherealness of this of the phenomena as we as as one would call it. We we wanted to understand it more, but we too had only had pieces. It was almost as though like there is a, an aspect of us that remembered, but it was almost as though like when we were in this normal sort of waking world, it just was gone. It wasn't right. there. And even as I talk to you right now, it's just like you know like there's this fear that I have in the back of my mind of like a ridicule factor. I know that would never happen from you. But that's like the sort of station, stationary aspect. I would tell him that. I'm like, I, I'm like, what's with the ridicule factor? Like, why why am I so afraid of that? He's like, well, look, you know, it's like, well, look around you. <laughs> look. Yeah. <laughs> look around you. But at the same time, he's like, or he's like, well, look around you. It's a very real fear. But then he sort of leaned in. He said, but is it your fear? Oh, that's that? good. Is it your fear? Is it your right. fear? Right. Or did you, or, were the, or was that given to you for a very specific reason? Because if they could, if if they wanted to take you off of this planet, they could have. You know yes. what I mean? Yeah. It, like, in, in other words, like, like if they wanted to end your life, they could have. So all of these times that, that you've had these experiences or had these dreams, uh, they're evidently there to educate you, to, you know, remind you of your starseed uh, power. Who knows what planets you actually truly are from. Um, well, here's the thing with that, things too. Things like that. The whole aspect of starseeds, like, we're all starseeds. Mm-hmm. Or, better yet, stardust. Mm-hmm. Like, we're, all of us, we're fermented stardust. Like, that's how this planet came to being. That's, that's where it got its carbon, is mostly from the stars that once were. Even even light particles, even particles of light, dust will grab those particles of light and eventually become planets. You know, it's just like it's amazing that like where light goes, you know, matter follows. Um, yeah. And so yeah. it's it's interesting. It's actually a really good piece I, right there. I, where light I, goes, matter follows. Yeah, I don't I don't believe at all. Like a lo- I think a lot of I, I believe that there's a lot of cults within ufology. I'm one of those individuals who doesn't like light activation language because it, it reminds me of opening portals. Mm. And I don't think it's something that we humans can do that. We can open portals. Should we be doing that? No. It's like well, killing. it could be one of the exercises that they taught you. They, they is actually, opening portals. No, they didn't teach me. That, that, that particular group didn't teach me portals. Um, at lesser entities taught me how to close and open portals. Mm. Um, like a lot of my sort of some of the like I, like I said like some of one of the workshops I got to experience which was that like sort of psychic witch like like workshop mm-hmm. that 
that that those lessons continued, but not necessarily by that sort of higher, advanced, more you know, group, whomever they were, but it was more taught by the the lesser kind, and not necessarily UFOs, but beings that already exist here. Maybe one could even call, think of them as the ancient gods that once were here, mm. but uh, but now we have different names for them, you know. But uh, those are the be- those are the beings uh, who, who, who taught me. Uh, one could say that I was taught by demons. <laughs> well, I'd like to believe that by you saying this story here and people hearing this, they're gonna th- those other. Cause I, I'm getting images of the other people who also share these memories, who could have very well been on that exact same ship with you. Hear this, and will. By the way, if 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 you are one of those people. Um, or have experienced anything remotely to, to, to that, please email me. It's the same exact name of the podcast, inspiratoprojecto at gmail.com, inspiratoprojecto at gmail.com. Please rewind this if you need to hear that again. Or you can call the hotline, and um, I'll feature any of your stories, any of your ideas, uh, dreams, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, on the show. Call up 561 203 9179 or that is a voicemail, so you don't have to get cold feet about someone picking up the phone. Uh, it's a voicemail. Just leave it on there, and I'll, I'll put it into a podcast episode. 561-203-9179. Or now, Mark, this will give me about, um, let's see, it only allows us an hour. So right now we're 46 minutes. So are there any uh, words of wisdom or um, another um, interesting experience that happened to you or further discussions that you had with the... Uh... I, I can go a little bit further into yeah. this. So, um, Bob Dean, my discussion with him, he, what he was pointing at in our discussion was that the phenomenon leads, leans more to the spiritual. Mm. And a lot of things within us, like he, one of the things that we joked around about was how old he was. Because he was like, dude, I'm old. And I'm like, yeah, but you know, you can stay here as long as you want. And he's like, yeah, but I don't know how long I want to stay here for. And it was interesting because we were just basically talking about this casual conversation about life and death like it's nothing and it's strange about it is it's like after talking with him for a while that's what it was like like there was just nothing to it wow. but when he died I was profoundly sad profoundly sad like I should have taken action to be one of those tramps mm. because I would have loved to have been a fly on the side of his wall and at any time that he would have said go away I would just, I just would have done it and it's cool because like I've taken that action since then I've I have great I have friends that I admire greatly I I, I you you know I <laughs> you. you yeah I get to hang out I get to take I get to, get to hang out with you on like the giant rock man I'm so fucking excited so you know it's just like you know it, it's 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 this great blessing you know to be able to have these people in your life and I would just my my the thing I want to want to say is like you know cultivate that and yeah. if it goes away it goes away it's sad but remember the good remember the good. That's that's the only way that we're going to get through this through this entire journey. No one gets off this planet alive. No, no one gets out of this journey alive. Right. But we can get through this journey having the sort of like kumbaya ending that we all want. You know, the sort of like good job. You know, yeah, yeah. it wasn't so bad. Hey, look what you did for the world, man! You planted a tree. Good yes, job. yes. You know, yes. it's just like that's that's the goal. And for me, it's like. You know, the phenomenon, I've tried to make, like I said, the religion of one. I've tried to make something spiritual out of all of this. For the long, you know, like you, you knew me when I was when I was really hesitant to talk about this because I, I had a lot of fear. But then, you know, I found groups of individuals I could talk to about this. And I would observe the phenomenon as it would happen as I would talk about this. And I would discover that, like, it's only when I'm talking about certain things in the phenomenon when when the phenomenon wants to come and sort of push its, you know, <clears throat> it's, uh, it's whatever on me. But um, the thing I want to leave with is this. Um, when I say demons, um, I'm just giving them a nickname. Mm. When I say angels, I'm just giving them a nickname. They're not necessarily that. Um, there are mystics who have been working with 
aspects high and below for, for centuries. There are people within institutions, of, behind closed doors, esoteric teachings, and even aspects of our own government that, that, that mess with these things. Jack Parson. Hey. Oh, I was just, I was exactly thinking of Jack Parson. It's so uh, funny, they called it the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. I called it the Jack Parsons Laboratory. Jack Parsons Laboratory. <laughs> he, he's such an interesting fellow. I'm reading a book on him right now on his life. Is it called uh, Strange Angel? Strange Angel, yeah. I was thinking about getting that book. It's That's really great. Good. You're reading that. That's the, great. The first chapter covers so much. The oh first two chapters, are like, like, and then you get to hear, like, what his mom was sort of like, because, like, she... Sadly, she kills herself. Uh, uh, very sadly. But what's great about it is you get to hear that there's this word that I recently discovered called hypomatic. Oh. And there's a sort of I, 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 I'm I'm under that sort of that classification. I get like really super excited about stuff. Mm. If things don't quite that like, you know meet up to that, I can get really super depressed. And then you know whenever that happens, I've, I've I have little aspects within me that sort of laugh at that depression mm-hmm. and then when the depression comes like look I can make something with it you know? mm-hmm. so, and that's the thing it's like keep it on the high you know if, you, if you're looking to the darker stuff keep it on the high if you're working with the higher stuff keep it on the high for God's sakes make it yours don't don't try to join a club a cult be a cog be a be your own self sovereign body of of, 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 a, of a temple of ideas. Visit other temples. Collaborate. Talk. But at no time feel that you have to basically join a club or be a light mm-hmm. activation talker or, or, or pay for thousands of dollars, you know, to go to, like, some sort of retreat at Mount Shasta to have, like, a, a crystal put up your butt. You know, don't. 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 <laughs> just, just do the work yourself. Read. Read. Excuse me. We live in a time, not Corona. <clears throat> I'm more just talking too long. Um, we live in a time to where you can basically read a series of books and do the work for a decade and come out of it as, as something stronger. Or even after a year, come out of something stronger. Um, personally, for me, over the last year, I've, I've, I've you know, I've, we're going to Giant Rock right now to, mm-hmm. to film content, mm-hmm. to make some creative stuff. Um, on Reverend Mark, my uh, YouTube page. This is Reverend Mark, by the way. <laughs> you guys already know That's that. right, Reverend Mark. Um, you can call me Mark, you can call me Reverend, it's totally cool. I, 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 Reverend is, think of Reverend as not necessarily a title, but uh, an idea of, 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 of the way I serve, essentially. Like, and and re- really, the, the spiritual aspect for me is this phenomenon, because it's all connected to God in one way or another. And I find something absolutely spiritual about it. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting because I'm, I'm one of those individuals who hears voices as I wake up and as I go to sleep. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting to cultivate some of those voices. Like, I can't tell you how many times I wake up and I'm just, like, arguing with something. Or telling something that, you know, I'm, not, I'm going to ignore you now. <laughs> it's like, you're, a, you're not doing this. <clears throat> Your ADHD is doing horrible things to your brain, and you're just like blah 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 blah. You know? It's like I don't need this diagnosis right now, thank you. <clears throat> there have been times that these sort of things in the morning, uh, these like for instance, one time I had this dream where I got taken out of my body. I'm watching the time too. Oh yeah, good. Um, I'm, I got taken out of my body, and I was basically shown something in my cabinet that I was eating that was going to give me a heart attack. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so I don't eat that thing. Anymore. Oh, that's <laughs> great. Oh, that's great. It's funny though. It was a cracker of some kind. It's like, yeah, you have this thing that you're eating that you love to eat, but you think that's, you know, harmless to you? It's actually harming you. Wow. And as soon as I stopped eating that, I actually noticed that um, I wasn't getting as windy as often. Wow. And it was easier to breathe, too. Like, it was getting so more... important to pay attention to those dreams and stuff like that. Oh, my gosh, you know, A lot yeah. of times people just, you know, just go, ah, that's just a dream. But no, 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 that's, a, that's another equal plane of existence where education comes through totally I'm gonna give I'm gonna give a little bit some some leave some keys some yes. esoteric yes um, anyway like I said uh, if you guys want uh, Reverend Mark dot com no the Reverend Mark dot com it's being built right now uh, Reverend Mark uh, Mark with a C uh, or or YouTube you can also find me there uh, I'm also on Clubhouse feel free to follow me talk to me I'll talk to you back um, here's a key here's an idea there's this very simple thing that we can all do to 
to sort of grow our, um, our, our, our mystical abilities and it's to forgive. Mm, as weird yes. as it sounds, forgiving yourself is a very, very powerful act. The next thing after that, it's, it's finding gratitude everywhere. Um, the best way to, 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 to combat any sort of like ill vibe, vibratory feeling that you might be having over yourself is to find the achievement, is to give yourself gratitudes, is to give others gratitude. Giving others gratitude is, is, is easy. You might run into some individuals who are, are very suspicious when it comes to people giving too much gratitude and whatnot, but don't worry, those people are going through their own sort of dark night of the soul. So, <laughs> but um, anyway, the most important thing is to always be kind, to, is always to, to have a certain level of kindness to yourself, to never hurt yourself, to never say horrible things about yourself. But also at the same time to be open to the idea that the ideas that we have may be ideas that have been given to us and not ideas that we have experienced and earned. And those are the really important things to kind of organize. What's what do I what do I know? You know, what has been given to me to know. There's nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, there is absolutely something important to being able to organize those two things together, especially when it comes down to understanding the phenomenon for yourself, if you are an experiencer or if we're seeking to experience. If you're seeking to experience, uh, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Just kidding. No, no, it's fine. You have your reasons. But if you are if you are already an experiencer, I say cultivate it, but cultivate it for the higher. And the way to do that is to be kind to yourself. You're always going to run into individuals who have like, who are seeking power or who have some sort of like messiah sort of like complex. I have the name Reverend in front. Again, not because I find myself to be some sort of messianic prophet, but more to be some sort of servant, mm. you know? And that is, that is the key to look at. The, the very communion between that and, and, and the concept of service. So with that, I, uh, I wish you all good luck on your journey. But at the same time, I ask, be careful. And be. <laughs> <laughs> and be. be. Thank you for listening to Inspirato Projecto. Inspirato. Projecto. Inspirato.